word of God. But thanks be to God anyway. And for those listening online and for those in the sanctuary who've had trouble hearing, isn't it nice to have a little bit better sound? Yeah, we discovered that the amplifier for the overhead speaker was dead. And so it's the one we have is on loan. Please pray with me that the amplifier can be repaired. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a very expensive little bill. So prayers for the amplifier. <laughs> well, I was thinking about, uh, as I read the scripture, I was thinking about a discussion that was part of a discussion worship service when I worked at First United Methodist Church in downtown Madison, Wisconsin. The discussion that day was about minimum wage. At the same time we were talking about this, the city of Seattle had just voted to make the minimum wage for their city $15 per hour. Using the passage from Matthew that we just heard, we all wrestled with that idea. And some of us wrestled more successfully than others. There was one man who was present who told the group that he wasn't sure he liked the idea of a $15 an hour minimum wage. After all, he had a college degree, and he was working as an ex in an executive position in a, in a place that he had just started to work. And his wage as a starting employee was $15 an hour, and he wasn't sure how he felt about a high school kid working in fast food, making as much as he did. Now, the day workers in Jesus' story today were complaining about their wages. The owner of the vineyard needed day workers. Day workers were those people who did not have a steady job nor a regular income. So they went every day to look for work. There was a spot in the village where all the day workers gathered, hoping that someone needed a temp worker for the day. Now, day workers then and now were desperate people. Most had families and most needed the money they made that day to put food in the mouths at home. Most hoped they might even make enough to have of the ability to rent a room for the night. Day workers lived difficult lives, and a few hours of work meant everything to them and to their families. It sounds like the mic's a little hot. Can we turn it down just a touch, please? Thank you. Now, the owner of a vineyard went to the place where the day workers gathered. He chose a few workers, and once a, once a wage was agreed upon, those chosen went happily off to work. They knew that they and their families were going to have dinner that night. Throughout the day, the vineyard owner came back to the group, to the spot for more workers. And at that time, wages were not discussed. The workers needed money, and they probably figured that their wage would be prorated against those who were working all day. At the very least, they knew that they'd be able to feed their children. And the owner kept returning, returning throughout the day, and finally hired his last batch of workers at about 5 p.m. And the last workers jumped at the chance to go to work until sunset, because they knew they weren't going to make much, but anything was better than nothing. Now, as workers were added throughout the day, the first workers chosen began to wonder about those who came later. How much do you think they're going to make? And aren't we lucky that we got chosen first and we'll get a full day's pay? They, would they knew that they were fortunate. Now at the end of the day, the workers lined up to be paid and the last to arrive were paid first. Those who had worked the 12 plus hour day were shocked when the last received the wage that they had agreed to for the full day. And shock was soon replaced by excitement because they figured if those last workers chosen were receiving a full day's pay, think how much more they were going to get. After all, they'd been there the whole day. They'd worked longer and harder. They deserved so much more. And no doubt they took a moment to thank God for all of the money that they would make that day. No doubt they were thinking about how many days food and shelter they would be able to have with that extra money. And then much to their dismay, the owner gave those who had worked the full day the same amount as those who had only worked a few hours. And let's face it, those first workers, they were angry. The more they talked about how unfair this was, the angrier they became. And finally, a few of those workers were so angry they marched up to the owner and protested. They said, we deserve a 
much bigger portion. And they wanted to know what the owner was going to do to make this right. Now, just a word of clarification, most interpreters believe that God is the owner of the vineyard and the workers are the faithful who work for God. Which means this story raises an important question. What do believers in Jesus deserve? Even more importantly, what do we think we deserve? Because some of us have lived our entire lives doing our best to follow Jesus faithfully. And we've heard stories of people who come to belief much later in life. We've heard about serial murderers who came to belief on death row after committing crimes that were nothing short of heinous. And as much as we may not like it, knowing God, chances are we're going to, we're going to see people in the next world that we really did not expect to see. And if that is the case, Shouldn't there be a special section in heaven for those who were faithful their whole lives long? Shouldn't the meals be better? Shouldn't the dwellings be nicer? I mean, doesn't it make sense that those of us who believed our whole lives, those of us who never got drunk, those of us who didn't use drugs, those of us who didn't choose to beat or kill anyone, those of us who never stole even a paperclip, those of us who have volunteered so many hours at church, those of us who gave generously a tithe of our time, our abilities, and our money, doesn't it make sense that those who believed more, believed longer, gave more, and sinned less, deserve more than those who came late to believe? The workers wondered why the owner paid those who worked for such a short time the same amount as those who had worked a full day. And in their hearts, they knew the owner was unfair. They believed that an injustice had been committed. They believed that the owner had treated them badly. Well, the owner responded by telling the workers that his generosity had not harmed them in any way. That his generosity was not an injustice, that he chose to be generous with all his workers. Why did they mind so much? God is generous to all who claim Jesus as their cross, to all who do their best to live Jesus' teachings, to all who seek to follow Jesus' way. And even if God chooses to reward deathbed converts with the same glory as lifelong followers receive, lifelong followers lose absolutely nothing in the process. So what do we deserve? Do lifelong believers deserve more than deathbed believers? Do some Christians deserve more from God than others? Not according to Jesus. In fact, God offers the same generous grace to all people. God's generosity in no way harms anyone. God's generosity is not an injustice toward anyone. I didn't see this before. The parable bugs me. Yeah. <laughs> the first guys get totally ripped off. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, the people Jesus called, you and I have come late in the day. I love this parable. There you go. By the time we reached the end of that worship discussion, most of us were struggling with God's generosity and even more struggling with a how to apply God's generous spirit to our daily lives. Most who have been followers of Jesus for a long time felt that, well, we deserved something more than those who were new to the faith. We believe that our abilities, our experience, our dedication, and our devotion should be rewarded more than those who had just begun. And regardless of what we thought, the story told us God is generous with all believers, like it or not. Finally, the man who questioned the $15 an hour as a minimum wage asked that he be allowed to speak at the end of this worship discussion. And he confessed that throughout the morning, he had wrestled with the reality of getting the same wages as a high school kid working in fast food on their first day. But he finally concluded that what somebody else was paid didn't affect him one bit. Why shouldn't they get paid as much as he did? That their pay didn't really mean anything to him one way or another. 
Generosity for this man was not unfair. Generosity for this man was not a cause to feel that he had been treated unjustly. In fact, this man was able to grasp the idea of generosity much more quickly than the rest of us in the room. God is generous. God's love, God's forgiveness, and new life are offered in equal measure to all. And I suspect some of us, like the workers in the story, may really have to wrestle with that idea. I suspect we, like the workers in the story, question God's generosity. And I have to admit there are days when I still struggle with that. Maybe you're the same. We wonder how God could be so incredibly generous when we've tried so hard, given so much, worked so long, and somebody off the streets, brand new to the faith, gets the same generosity God gives us. But you know, for those who come late to faith, God's generosity is a gift that takes absolutely nothing away from us. Whether we appreciate it or not, God is generous toward us all. Amen.